Rastafari. Greetings again, family. Ross John Farai, reporting for Rastafari on Hidden Colors. And this, the next two vids I'm going to do here today is about this. The Ethiopian, Ethiopic Ocean, commonly known today as the, you would say, Atlantic Ocean. Now, as you can see here, brothers and sisters, check this out. Before I get into the ocean um, discussion, look, look at this. Notice this, this is what you would call today the Middle East. But in the times of the 15th, 16th, 17th century, this was all Northeast Africa. There was no Middle East until like, I think it had to have been when the Suez Canal was built, like in the late 19th century. And um, they cut that part off and then they gave it a Middle East. Well, in hindsight, if you look at this map, you see it's all North or East Africa. But again, they just want to take Israel, Palestine, and anything to do with that out of its connection with Holy Mama Ethiopia. But that's for another video. But let's check this out. This is the Ethiopian Ocean. This is from a map from the British War Museum I got offline. And as you can see, it shows all of Africa. But you notice Ethiopia is not just like right here. It's not that little country. You know, it's not the, what you usually see in the map. It's this whole land encompasses all the way into the land of Ophir, which you can say is like Zimbabwe, South Africa. This is Ethiopia as how it was seen by the early Europeans and others. But this is the point. Ethiopian Ocean. Now, ones would say, how, how did they change it? Well, as time went on, a lot of the um, ex explorer, European explorers put their dent on a lot of these names, like Ethiopian Ocean. They call it the Atlantic. But let's check this out. Ancient Greek historian, the... Diostrus and Pophilus mentioned that the Gorgons lived in the Gorgades Islands in the Ethiopian Sea. The main island was called Cerna, and according to Henry T. Riley, these islands may correspond to Cape Verde. On the 16th century maps, the name of the North Atlantic Ocean was Sinus Oceanates. That's really hard Greek, Latin, whatever. While the Central Atlantic Southwest of present-day Liberia appeared on Sinus Atlantis and the Southern Atlantic um, Ocean. On the, by the 17th century, John Seller divided the Atlantic Ocean in two parts by means of the equator. So that's how it happened. They, they, they named a lot of what they would call the Atlantic Antarctica because they were dividing it by the equator. So again, they decided to even divide, not only were they dividing Africa and they were putting border lines and this and that, but they were dividing the world as how they wanted to see. And instead of showing you like this, this is how the, um, the Greeks saw the world, Europa, Asia, yeah, Libya and you know, rest is Africa and there's the Ethiopian Ocean. So again, a lot of the 16th, 17th century Europeans were seeing things from their own like, you know, white supremacy worldview where the ancient Greeks and the Romans never really did. They usually saw things with a lot less prejudice than the later white Anglo-Saxon or German people did regarding the whole world. But this is something too interesting I wanted to share with you all. Give me one second. It's called Restore the Name of the Ethiopian Ocean. And let's check this out. This is from the subcontinent map of McFadden of London on the Dutch colony of the Cape of Good Hope. In each of these maps... The southern part of the ocean, now called Atlantic Ocean, was named Oceanus Ephiophix, excuse me about that, Ethiopic Ocean or Ethiopian Ocean for several centuries. As a person of Ethiopian origin who values the history of humanity, its pearls and advancements, successes and failures collectively, I believe is up to the contemporary society to present information for conception of knowledge based on facts. And check this out. Where was it? Touch the history of things in their wider perspective. I expect the data 
of information presented in a document preserved and display history from the beginning of map formations by Greeks, Romans, and recent Europeans, particularly Portuguese. The naming of the ocean had implications in those times as Ethiopia was, Ethiopia was one of the strongest empires in the world. Now that's coming from the 1795 Dutch um, colony of the Cape of Good Hope. As a partner of travel and across the Indian Ocean, these strong powers shared names, technologies, and other cultures, artifacts. It is from these close encounters that the Greeks and Romans had fascinations with Ethiopia, and the original cartographers put the name Ethiopia or Ethiopia where they want to designate place or goddesses such as Cassiopeia, queen of Ethiopia, who was the mother of Andromeda in Greek mythology. Ethiopians and Ethiophiles alike across the globe do have regard and honor to the Greek, Romans, and Europeans who didn't notice of Ethiopia and its presence in the world, who wanted to put marks and bearing Ethiopian names on their activities of global matters. Such navigations and map formations, but for reasons of no merit, the name Ethiopian Ocean was deleted in this century from all maps and put in place in the Atlantic Ocean. I do not have anything bad about naming the Ocean Atlantic, but removing the original name is also a loss of historical truth and value. And what's that? I'll say in my next video, I will tackle Atlantis and the Ethiopic origins as well. So give thanks and praise to the Most High. Ja